Hey everyone, I'm Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we will be going through the concept of orbital speed. We will be learning about the equation for orbital speed and how to use it. So first things first, we need to understand about the orbits. Are orbits circular? Now, in most diagrams that you would have seen about any orbits, whether they're the planets orbiting the sun or the moon orbiting the earth, these orbits are typically drawn as circular orbits. For example, right here, you've got all the orbital paths drawn here in a circular manner. The truth is the orbits are not circular. They're not perfect circles. The orbits are actually elliptical, not circular. What is an ellipse? So an ellipse is actually an oval shape like this. So if you remember math, a circle, a perfect circle, has a center. And if you measure the distance along the circumference of that circle from the center, they're all equal. That means the radius of the circle is equal. This is not true for the orbits in space. That means whether the planets are orbiting the sun or the moons orbiting the planets, the orbits are not circular. So an ellipse is actually kind of an oval shape. It's one type of oval that is made up of two focus points. Now in this video, we're not going to go through the concept of an ellipse because this falls under math. If you'd like to know more about an ellipse, I'll be happy to make another video explaining all about that shape. But for now, it's enough for you to know that, yeah, it's an ellipse, not a circle. So an ellipse like this consists of two focal points. If you're wondering what are focal points, again, that's more of a math thing for now. Just be aware, the sun is not at the center. It's actually at one of the focal points. And this concept is true for all orbits. Now, different orbits will have different ratios of the vertical to the horizontal. For now, you just need to know that in the Earth's orbit around the sun, the sun lies at one of the focus points of the Earth's elliptical orbit. You do not need to know all these elliptical terms like perigee, OPG, and all that. No need to know. This is all you need to know. The sun is at one of the focus points of the elliptical orbit of the Earth. For your information, yes, the moon also orbits in an ellipse around the Earth. Now, the equation for the orbital speed is very logical and it's quite easy to derive. So, generally, you know that speed is distance over time. I'm going to write that out. So in this case, the orbital speed refers to the speed of the object that is orbiting whatever is in the center. So for example, the orbital speed of the Earth is basically the speed at which the planet Earth is orbiting the Sun. The distance in this case refers to the distance traveled by Earth, which as you can see is pretty much along the orbit. By now, we know that the orbit is actually elliptical, so that means the distance traveled is basically the circumference of this ellipse. The time, of course, is the orbital period. Orbital period here means the time for one complete orbit. It means the time that the planet takes to make one complete orbit around the object, in this case, planet Earth around the Sun. I've got these two diagrams here because I want to show you that this equation can be used whether you are looking at a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit. So if we were to take a circular orbit, which by now we know is not true, but just for the sake of the calculation to make it easier for us to understand, let's take the circumference of this circle. So assuming that the radius of this orbit from the center of the sun is r, as you can see, if we assume this to be a perfect circle, the distance traveled is the circumference of this circle, which, if you remember your math, the circumference is calculated as 2 pi r. So I'm going to write that into the equation for distance. Time, of course, is the orbital period, which we will put as t. The thing is, we have just discussed in the previous slide that the orbit is not a perfect circle. It's actually an ellipse. So then how do we take this equation and apply it in this case? So for this kind of orbit, we can still take this formula of 2 pi r over t. 
But you're looking, wait a minute, there's no fixed radius. That's right. So instead, R is actually the average radius of this ellipse. That means that if we were to measure the radius throughout the circle, yes, it's constantly changing. So you take the average radius of the entire ellipse. That average radius, if you put into the formula, 2 pi r, you will get the circumference of this ellipse. So that means in this formula, r would be the average radius of the orbit, while t is the orbital period. I'm just going to change color so that you can see it clearly. It's orbital period. Just to complete the symbols, normally speed would be represented by the symbol V. We have V is normally velocity, but we don't write S because S means something else, displacement. So V is normally used to represent speed or velocity. So I'm just going to highlight this is the formula that you would need to know to calculate orbital speed. How do we use this equation? So let me move my face out of the way. Now. Say we've got a situation, the average radius of Earth's orbit around the Sun is given as 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 kilometers. The time for one full orbit of Earth around the Sun, as you should know by now, is one full year, which is equivalent to 365 and a quarter days. So to calculate this, all we need to do is take the equation for the orbital speed. So I'm going to write it in symbol form here where v equals 2 pi r over t. So as you can see in this question, they gave us the average radius, which is typically how they would give us the value if you need to calculate it. So we, all we need to do is just take these values and substitute them into the equation. Now do take note that the radius given here is in kilometers, so ideally we should be converting it into meters. If you don't convert into meters, you can of course keep the value in km, just remember to write the speed as km per time. So in my case, I'm going to convert it to meters because I like to write it in SI units. Now the time given here is in days. The SI unit for time is seconds, so we need to convert this into seconds. So how to convert this? We know that one day has 24 hours, one hour has 60 minutes and one minute has 60 seconds. So when we work this out, you would get a value of 29865 meters per second, but we don't write the value this way. If you have five digits, you should ideally write this in standard form and two to three significant figures. So I'm going to write this in standard form up to three significant figures like so. That's how you can use the orbital speed to solve the question in this case. Let's go through another example. So now, let's say we have to calculate the orbital speed for the moon orbiting around the Earth. Now we're given the average radius of the moon's orbit around the Earth as 3.84 times 10 to the power of 8 meters. Notice that for this question, they give it to us in meters this time. The time for one full orbit of the moon around Earth is about 27 days. So how we solve this is the same. We would still use the same formula where V is 2 pi r over t. And again, you can see that the question gave us the average radius. So we're going to put that value in. And we don't have to convert it because it's already in the SI unit of meters. However, for time, because it gave us a value in days, we need to convert days into seconds. So how to do that? Same thing. One day has 24 hours, one hour has 60 minutes, and one minute has 60 seconds. And from this, you should get 1034 meters per second. But again, we don't leave the numbers in this form. Let's write it in standard form up to three significant figures. We would get 1.03 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. Other things you need to know about the orbit. You should be aware that the orbital speed is not constant. So whatever values we've calculated just now, it's not the constant speed of the Earth around the Sun or the Moon around the Earth. You'll find that it's actually the average orbital speed. 
Throughout the movement of the celestial body on its orbit, the speed is not constant. The reason for this is because the speed of the orbiting object depends on the gravitational force acted upon it by the object which is orbiting. That means in this case, planet Earth's orbit around the Sun depends on the Sun. So how fast the speed is depends on the proximity of Earth to the Sun, or in other words, how close the Earth is to the Sun. We'll find that the closer the object is to the sun, the greater its speed. And the reason for this is because, you've got to think of it this way, the closer the Earth is to the sun, the stronger the gravitational force is between the Earth and the sun. Makes sense, right? Because the closer an object is, obviously, the stronger the gravitational pull. The further the object is away from the sun, the weaker the gravitational pull of the sun on that object. So when the gravitational pull is stronger, you got to think, oh, the force is stronger. So remember, force is related to acceleration, right? So the stronger the force, the faster the object is going to move. That's why the closer the Earth is to the Sun, the faster it moves. So at this point, this is where it's the fastest, and as it moves away from the Sun, it actually slows down. The further away the Earth is from the Sun, the lower its speed. This can be explained using the principle of conservation of energy. So with the example of Earth in this case, at this point where the Earth is closest to the Sun, it has its greatest speed. Therefore, its kinetic energy is greatest. Because, as you should recall, kinetic energy is half mv squared. Greater speed, greater kinetic energy. As the Earth moves away from the Sun, the kinetic energy is converted to potential energy. And then as it gets closer, the potential energy is converted back to kinetic energy. And this conversion happens alternatingly as the Earth orbits the Sun. So you can think of this as being very similar to what we experience on the Earth. Because when you drop an object, when the object is further away from the surface of the Earth, it has greater potential energy. And then as it falls, it gets closer to the Earth. That means the gravitational field strength is stronger. Its speed increases. That means the kinetic energy increases. So the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. So that's on the surface of the Earth. So the conversion of energy applies similarly in this case. Not exactly the same, but very similar. So kinetic energy is converted to potential as it slows down and then increases again into kinetic energy. So another way to help you understand it is like this. Say the Earth is over here, and because of the gravitational pull of the Sun, it gets pulled closer and closer to the Sun. So as it gets closer, it gets faster and faster. And then what happens is it moves so fast, it gets slingshot, and then it gets thrown out, and slows down again. It gets pulled, slingshot out, and throws down. So it gets pulled, slingshot out, and slows down, gets pulled, increasing in speed again, and slingshot out back again. So one question that some students ask is, why doesn't the Earth just crash straight into the Sun? Since the Sun has a gravitational pull, right? Why doesn't it just pull the planets into its own core? And the reason for that is because the planets are rotating. They're rotating around its axis. So this rotation creates its own speed and force that prevents the planet from getting pulled in. So it's getting pulled towards the Sun so that's how it stays in its orbit, but it doesn't get pulled in because as it's rotating, it's able to stay away from the sun. So there are two opposing forces. One is the gravitational force that pulls the planet towards the sun, and another is the rotating force that keeps the planet from moving away from its orbit. So that's why the planets don't go crashing into the sun, and that's why the planets are able to stay on their orbital path. But because the distance of the planet along the orbit changes as it moves along the orbit, the speed of the planet moving on its orbit changes. So remember, the closer the object is to the sun, the greater its speed. And this can be explained using the principle of conservation of energy. And that's it for this video. So if you found this video educational and helpful, please subscribe for more physics lessons by your physics teacher, Ms. Ho. Please help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals. Donations are welcomed at my coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash physicsrocks. If you'd like access to notes, quizzes, as well as syllabus updates, do check out my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!